Hey folks, welcome back. We've got this uh, 2012 F-350 in the shop today. Um, it's got about 315,000 miles on it. It's a 6.7 power stroke. Now the issue that uh, they told me that it has is just driving down the road, it'll just randomly shut off um, and then pull over the side of the road and go to restart it, um, turn the key, lights do come up on the dash and everything. Um, but when they go to turn the key, nothing happens, no crank, nothing. And then uh, sometimes after a while, um, it will restart again. Um, the last time it did it, they actually loaded it onto a trailer, brought it over here to my shop. It actually happened to start up and run just fine. Had them bring it in here. I wasn't able to get to it that day. And then um, got to looking at it today and realized that we've got our symptom. Uh, we've just got basically a no crank. Um, will not crank and start. So basically when you, uh, as complicated as all the electronics are in these things with all the different modules, computers, whatever you want to call them, um, you got to be pretty observant as to what's uh, going on. Um, so the first thing you want to, you know, to, to mention about is, uh, you know, uh, we'll go in there and we'll turn the key and I'll show you what's kind of going on. Okay, so let's open the door. We are getting our noise from the, you know, showing us that the key is in the ignition. We'll go ahead and uh, just switch this on. Um, I don't see a glow plug light. So there's one thing. We got nothing. You can hear clicking going on over there. Whether that's significant or not, I don't know. I don't think there's any relays or anything over there as far as starting goes. It just could be something going on. I don't know if that's supposed to, uh, you know, and it's running through some deals here. You know, it's got a bunch of stuff going on. We notice that the uh, fuel gauge comes up. All the rest of these gauges are supposed to be down where they're supposed to be at. And one of the other things, these um, uh, 2010 and above pickup, Ford pickups do is when you open the door, um, it turns the marker lights on. But when this one does it, we don't have any on the front, nothing. But we do have it on the bed. So that's something that, you know, just kind of going to keep in the back burner a little bit um, to kind of just think about because, you know, it's obviously that's not right. And it could be significant to our problem or it could mean nothing. Other thing is, we'll try to see if we can switch the marker lights on. We get dash lights over there. We don't get any dash lights there. We get them here. Obviously, we got those working. That's not working. Nothing. That's supposed to be on. Turning the marker lights on. Let's try the headlights right quick. Headlights do come on, but that could be wired different, but as you can see, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to walk around, but yeah, headlights do come on, but we've got no, uh, no marker lights on the front here. Like I said, that could be a significant thing to our problem, or it could not be. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, hook up our scanner, pull some codes, if there is any. I'm sure there is. All right, so we're going to... Going here to system selection, the first thing I'm going to check is the body control module because that's um, kind of controls all the lights. I just want to have curiosity of what's uh, going on there. So we're going to get into this module and go read fault code. And we got quite a few of them. There's a big one right there. Missing communication with ECM or PCM. We got a transmitter ID code. We've got passive anti-theft system. We got, you know, I don't know. We're going to have to individually look at some of these codes and figure out, um, you know, what's, uh, 
what's going on with the run and start control. We got a lot of stuff going on here that could pertain to our issue, most likely. So we're gonna leave these um, in there for right now, and we're gonna go into the uh, powertrain control module. Uh, we can later on we'll do some actuation tests. But let's let's go into that PCM and see uh, if we can <clears throat> see what's going on there. Okay, we'll go into the PCM. Uh oh, this module is not responding. Hmm. Okay, let's try to just go into, we had a tire pressure monitor. Let's see if we can just go into that module right quick. So we're able to uh, get into, you know, obviously we got into the body control module. Um, we got into the tire pressure control module. Let's try this transfer case control module, see if we can get into that. So we got most everything, uh, read fault code. Oh, this one's missing communication with the PCM also. Let's try this anti-lock brake system control module. Let's go into that, see what's... Uh, I'm just basically trying different things, kind of get a layout of what's, uh, you know, what's going on. <clears throat> that module's not responding, so we don't have the ABS braking system modules not responding either. Okay, I'm going to try going into the instrument cluster panel control module. Yeah, we can get into that one just fine. Let's see if we've got any fault codes in it, but it probably can't talk to the ECM either. There it goes right there. And the analog brake con uh, system control module can't communicate with that either okay so we're uh we're getting some ideas and getting closer what's what's going on right now we cannot communicate with the uh, pcm we can't communicate with the uh, analog braking system control module uh is there another one let's right quick go into this trailer brake control module i think i saw a fault with that but i can't remember if that was now this i don't know what's going on this that might have something to do with the fact that it can't communicate with PCM or something like that. So this trailer brake control one was not responding either. That's, you know, that's this control here. But so we got a few things that just are not communicating, but we have some things that are. So try this PCM again. Nope, oh, not responding. All right, so we're gonna get some uh, get a manual pulled up on this and uh, look some wiring schematics and whatnot, and uh, go from there. Okay, so a couple of few things I did off camera hooked back into the body control module. Um, could turn on the parking lamps from there, but they still don't come on. Same was as it did with the switch, but you can individually turn on, you know, like the right headlight, left headlight. Um, front uh, turn signal all that stuff works just fine um, the reason why I'm going to get the manual pulled up and we're going to find out you know what inputs and outputs and all that stuff for the ECM and how all that stuff uh, communicates is because one of the things you don't want to do is just start going in here you want to look and and see things um, possibly that you can see from the external but with a, with an intermittent problem like this because this thing was working just fine a few days ago when they brought it into my shop everything was fine um without getting any symptoms There's nothing i can really do but it just happened to be that i finally got a symptom here so what you don't want to do is just start unplugging wires and moving things or moving this this and that and the other because then your problem can go away and you may not be able to figure out what's going on so we want to be able to keep the symptom as long as possible until we get it figured out what's going on uh, one of the other things i noticed is these batteries look pretty old look pretty you know uh corroded and all that kind of stuff we've got some you know i mean that kind of stuff we, we want to leave it for now 
because I don't want to just start doing a whole bunch of stuff and then all of a sudden the problem go away and not realize that, oh, I may have just cured the problem but didn't know it or the problem just went away for a little bit and um, a person may think it's fixed and then all of a sudden you get a call a couple days later, hey, this thing's back on the freeway again. That's what I'm trying to avoid. We want to actually get this thing fixed. So let's get that uh, manual and wiring schematics open up, see what we can see there. All right, folks, so I went ahead and pulled up this uh, schematic to start off with. Because um, right here we've got our uh, battery junction box. Which is this, your fuse panel here that's under the uh, engine, or you know, in the engine <clears throat> bay here. And this portion is in the body control module. Um, there's a fuse panel for that, all, or in that also, that's underneath the passenger's uh, side kick panel, I'll show you that. And then this is the uh, actual PCM. Okay, so if we go right in here to the passenger side, there's your other uh, fuse panel right there. Um, we're going to talk about this F-18 fuse, which is, uh, well, come on, light. Down there on the bottom left, see where it says 18? So that's going to be that fuse right there. So I'm going to go talk about that right now. I just wanted to show it to you now so I don't get back in here. Okay, so that's uh, this fuse right here, PCM wake up, um, says it's hot at all times. And that's the F F F18, it's 10 amp fuse. Um, I checked it, it is working, got power on both sides of the fuse. That goes into PCM wake right there. Um, I'm not exactly sure how all that right now works. Um, you know, but you can also see that with that circuit, we're also going out to the power distribution. Um, so we need to find like this schematic right here, this line 1330 in another schematic and find out where that goes. If it, if let's say this circuit didn't work right now, we're not worried about it because it works. So the next thing, um, let me get a pointer here. Uh, we've got the power P PCM power relay. That is this, uh, gray one big big gray one right here that's the uh pcm power relay because if you look at the right here you can see i've printed this out on the same program mitchell dyi and you've got the pcm power relay right there okay so that goes through uh f72 fuse the 10 amp um it's hot at all times you can see that the uh, you know the power runs into here and runs on this side of the relay, and I'm sure this is an input right here to you know click that side of the relay on, and you've got your power coming through here. There's probably a jumper out on the outside of the of the uh, plug, you know on the back of the this battery junction box, and then. <clears throat> as the relay clicks then you get power sent to over here to um, the F33 fuse 15 amp which in turn goes into these three ports here um, so I checked we do have power on this uh, F72 10 amp fuse okay so if we look we've got F72 right there so right here we got a a long line of uh, 10 amp fuses right here so if you go this is your run start relay according to what that deal says this is F73 72 71 so this fuse right here is supposed to be hot all the time we checked it and it is okay and so this was not hot at all times this is when the key is on so then you've got also this F35 fuse right here goes down to the uh, power distribution. Turn some other stuff on. Okay, we're also where we're talking about that F35 uh, fuse right here, and I'll just go ahead and show you how I, you know, I got the test light other side grounded on there, 
Um, and you can see we got the uh, PCM power relay, and then we got this row right here, and it's the third one, you know, 37, 36, 35. So we've got 37, 36, 35. And so then I just go on this point right here. Boom, you can see we got power there, and we got power there, so we're getting it on both sides of the fuse. Okay. So that pretty much uh, tells me that this relay is functioning because I know I don't have power on these with the key off. And then when the key on, I know that this is sending power to where it needs to here and here. But this one, hot in start and run, this F52 10 amp fuse. Okay, so we've got this F52 right here it's in this row from the fuel pump relay which is the fuel pump relay is right there and so i started counting from the bottom here at you know 49 50 51 52 so we've got 49 50 51 52 and this is supposed to be hot in run or start and it's not. So there's an issue right there that we need to start figuring out. We're gonna to need to backtrack and it's probably in this uh, battery control box, fuse panel. So we don't have any power on this F52 fuse, which in turn means we don't get any power going to this power distribution and we don't have anything going into the PCM on this um, ISP-R, which I don't right, remember right now what that uh, stands for. We'll figure it out. Um, so anyways, yeah, we've got to um, figure out. You know, and this, this kind of makes sense as to what our symptom is, is because we can turn the key on and obviously some things come on. And so that's going to be because of all of this. You've got this power distribution. That's all... Uh, coming on and so um, power distribution body control module so this is basically going to the um, fuse panel that is in the uh, cab by the passenger foot kick panel whatever you want to call that um, just where the same location as where this F-18 fuse was at so we know that we're not getting any power going in here from this location here, that doesn't mean we need to go, we don't need to check or go to anywhere on here because we know we're not gonna have power here if we don't have it here. We need to get it here. That's the that's the first goal right here. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that fuse, pull that fuse out carefully. This is where it sucks when you start having to move stuff and all that kind of stuff. And I'll pull that fuse out um, and check it right on the terminal there because you could get a bad connection you know through the fuse and all that kind of stuff when you start pulling stuff this part you got to be real careful about you know not losing your uh symptom and all that stuff um by you know if i pull that fuse and all of a sudden then i put it back in and we've got a good connection well you know we might not realize that and might not realize that we fixed the issue or found the issue or anything like that so this is where you got to be real careful so Okay, so I got this um, diagram brought up. This is a uh, power distribution circuit diagram for fuse 45, 49, 50, and 52. And I got it because that's what I was after was that fuse 52 because that's the one that was not getting hot when we uh, turned the key on. And so um, we've got this battery junction control box here. We've got the run start relay. And then if we scroll down here right there, there's our there's our F52 fuse and goes into you know the powertrain control module. We've also got it branches off and goes into the transmission control module. Um, can't get it to run, so we're not doing anything there. We've got this uh, F50 fuse and um, it's going into the uh, blower motor relay, which um, <clears throat> I confirmed does not work. We turn the key on, the blower motor does not come on. And so none of these fuses uh, get hot with the key on like they're supposed to. 
And so then I went back and found uh, this Fuse 45, which is, you know, hot at all times. And, um, you know, that, so you can see that that runs on the one side of the relay. And then you've got in the body control module, you know, your micro switch for your run start deal. Um, that should click that relay. And then uh, you've got the power right here. It's not from the Fuse 45, but it's from this side of the relay at least. And on pin three, and that's how we get power uh, when the relay clicks, then it goes over to five, and then it supplies all of these three fuses with power. So we know we're not getting power there, but we are getting power to this. Um, this so we got it on this side of, well, we don't know if we have it on that side. We're going to pop that relay out and, and see if we got power on the number one terminal. And then also we're going to see if we got power on the number three. We'll do that. Okay, so this is how this is oriented in here. Um, we've got our run start relay, as you can see. It goes down and points at that. And then you got this relay. It's a little bit staggered right here. That's your trailer uh, tow relay parking lamps or whatever. So that's actually these two right here. So we got this relay right here as our run start relay. So we need to pull that guy out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. Um, Hold on, let me show you this relay. Okay, it's a pretty simple relay. Um, we're not using the normally open side, or the normally closed side, I mean. You can see where it goes 30 to 87. Um, that's normal, that, that would be normally open. And so when you energize it, it closes between 30 and 87. Your 86 and 85 are your actual coil. So if you look on the bottom here, these, these right here, your 86 and 85. Um, coil right here and then you got your uh, 30 and your 87 terminal right here and this guy right here and um, so we need to have power here and then we need to have power I believe it's going to be on the it should be on the 86 side if you put that in there it should be on the right side so anyways let's and it's hot, hot at all times, so the key is off right now. So we're going to go in here and you can see how those terminals are oriented there. you got the two small ones on the top and then sideways, and you got the other one, these other two. I can't really point out these here right here. So we're going to go. I'm going to try to, I can't really get into it with the camera in the right view. So we're going to go right here. We got power there. We're going to go all the way back here, and we got power there. So we've got that. Okay, so what that means is we've got power here to terminal one, and we got power here to terminal number three, which they're calling on the relay itself 30. But we have it there on on there on three, and we got it there on one. Um, so what we need to do is we need to test this relay. This is the next thing we do because we could either have a bad relay or this micro switch right here in the body control module area isn't doing its job to uh, supply the ground. You can see what it does is you got power on number one on this side of the coil and then on this side of the coil number two goes out and goes through here and that goes through this micro switch to ground right there and that's what energizes that relay. Okay, folks, well, we know um, I've been doing a little bit, a little bit of trying to check, find out, you know, which way I was uh, going to go with this. But um, we know that this, you, this Fuse um, 52 does not uh, power up how we're supposed to, so that's what we got this. We know that the PCM power relay is coming on, so I went ahead and got this um, power distribution diagram going right here. Recapping that we do have power on this number three. We do have the power coming through this um, I think It's f45. I kind of drew a line right through it. We know that's got power to it there um, <clears throat> But we know that this here's this is that fuse 52 Which is going into the powertrain control module and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a power probe 
and we're going to go ahead and just power up this side of this fuse and just turn this on. We'll probably turn both of these on. Um, and see if we can connect to the um, ECM. Okay, so we got our fuse pulled out. And we're going to probe it right in here. And then we're going to just apply with this power probe. We're just going to apply the 12 volts. Um, <clears throat> I got it connected right here. So I know that we can connect to... No, that's not the one I wanted to do. Well, we'll see if it... Yeah, it'll connect to that one. Uh, it was the uh, body control module. That one we knew we can connect to. And we can. So then we'll come back over here to the PCM and just verify again that we can't connect to it. And we can't. Okay. So now. Okay, now I got us a key on. I got a jumper. And we're going to. Um, Okay, so now we know it will start and run if we can get this relay right here, which is not being commanded on. Which is coming from the body control module and coming into this battery junction box, which is your, your uh, fuse box right over there. Because um, <clears throat> we know that if we turn this on, I also did jumper into uh, this fuse um, 50 the same way which actually turned the blower motor on so I know that that'll come on um, this one doesn't really matter because it's just a video camera reverse camera or something like that I guess um, but we know that when we put on this side we're talking about that side of the fuse of 52 and we power this up here with the power control coal module we can one, we can connect to it and, and talk to it, and the other is that we'll uh, start the engine, and the engine will start and run. So we know, as long as we can get this relay to be commanded on, the relay is, is good, it, it tests good, um, but we're, and we got power on the one side over here, it's just that we don't have this, probably got a broken wire in between this two and, you know, over here so that's what we got to figure out um probably going to start with uh pulling apart pulling out the uh junction box here and just having a look see underneath of it and see figure out where we can uh go from there um you know instead of you got to try to be at least figure out the problem rather than going from here to you know <clears throat> there with a new wire I don't like to do that um try to actually like fix the problem if we can because if it's if it's in a group of wires or something like that, and you got a broken wire or something here, chances are you got other wires here that are just about ready to be broken. And the last thing you want to do is say, "Hey, I got this thing fixed," and be screwed around with the wiring, and then you get some other wiring, and then something else breaks, and it doesn't, you know, it makes it doesn't make yourself look very good when you think you fix something and then something else breaks and goes wrong too. So, anyways, we we want to try to find and fix that and figure out what's going on because this is supposed to this micro switch right here in the uh, body control module um is supposed to provide a ground to this relay and that's what's not going on. So, we want to be able to uh figure out what's going on with that. So, let's keep on going. All right, so the easiest way to get to these uh fuse boxes because there's not a whole lot of room up here and instead of taking all of this off um right here see them two bolt holes that one and that one just two 13 millimeter headed bolts because that's where this bolts on just like that holds the fuse box inside of there um anyways get the bottom part just unclips with these here um we got this little wire right here if you look on this uh 
schematic right here it says it's a brown it's a brown wire with a violet stripe on it going right straight to the body control module um, into here Alright folks, what we did, you know, as we were I Tony found that brown and purple wire and we looked in here, we didn't find anything as far as it goes into here. Everything looked okay. I went in back probed it. Then we got us a jumper wire running up through the cab. And we came into here and back probed it where it comes into here on this body control module. And uh Ran us a jumper wire. I know it's kind of jerry-rigged and everything like that, but ran us a jumper wire. Like that's the one going through the cab. And now, watch the glow plug light come on, which we never seen before, right there in the in the tack. So if we also come over here and we just unhook this, she dies and shuts off. So that's our problem is we have a broken wire in between that uh, body control module and the fuse panel over there. Battery junction box is what they call it. Well folks, I didn't uh, film much of, uh, you know, I just ran a, a new wire, um, you know, through and underneath the dash from that, from the um, oh, body control module over there to the um, fuse box. It's not the way I prefer to do it. Um, I give the customer the choice that it's a better if, it, if we actually track, track down and try to find the, the break in the wire somewhere but it could take a lot of time to do so <clears throat> or do I just here's an an hour and I can have a new wire run through there and so it's typically about seven out of ten times that's what they choose so anyways that's um all we got so when we got this thing uh got her starting and running running good other than the tire pressure sensor fault but uh, I asked them to look at that. Oh, no, don't worry about that. So, okay, no problem. So, anyways, we got that running, and now it shuts off with the key like it's supposed to. So, anyways, uh, hopefully that helps you out. You know, we found that break in the wire, and, um, you know, hopefully that, you know, gives you an idea, because it could be a lot of different things. Um, but, uh, you know, just finding that, getting that communication, um, established with the ECM that got our starting problem fixed. So, but if you'd have got your starting problem fixed and that would have gotten your, uh, ECM communication fixed. So <laughs> either way, whichever way you want to go about it, I just start with the easiest stuff first. So anyways, hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.